Hey, what's going on guys? Robbie Rowe here. So um, I want to do this post. I've been wanting to do it for a while. I've kind of been going back and forth on if I should do it or if I should not. Um, before we dive into it, I want to first and foremost clarify for the billionth time that, uh, that I'm not a certified strength conditioning coach. I'm not a certified therapist. I'm not a licensed doctor. I'm not any of these, these, uh, these personnels, I guess. Um, because again, I'm going to be talking about equipment. I'm going to be talking about a tool. And I think there's this fine line that you got to walk in this industry in regards to like if you're, you know, basically capable or certified to talk about certain things like this. But uh, what I will say, again, I'll try to keep it brief um, before we dive in. What I will say is the whole foundation of what you see online, um, my online presence with Instagram, podcast, my website, YouTube, Twitter, like all of these things, the foundation for why I started it and why I continue to, to do it is to essentially just you know give back to you guys man and take what I've you know accumulated throughout my 10 year professional journey and uh, and give it to you and or at least just give you the option of like hey here it is and if and if you guys don't want any part of it then you don't want any part of it that's completely fine but for me my desire is is trying to help motivate and inspire you guys and uh, basically just just give you the tools to essentially allow you um, to become the best possible, you know, I know a lot of you are pitchers or the best possible just athlete in general. And uh, like I said, I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't really include all of the, the, the utilization of tools um, that I've utilized throughout my entire journey that have worked uh, for me. I, and if I didn't include that within what I'm doing, then I wouldn't be doing it to the, my full you know, capability. So with that being said, today, I, I mean, you guys see it already, I want to talk about these bell clubs. When I was playing, we called them Indian clubs, but uh, the company that sponsors me, Oat Specialties, probably see a lot of their stuff. I know I promote them a lot, Tap Sports. Um, they sent me some bell clubs. Um, so basically what I want to talk about is obviously why I like these, why I utilize these, why I'm even you know encouraging you guys to utilize these, but um, in the simple sense, the, the, the disconnect that I see um, in the pitching development industry is we're having a lot of kids, and I'm not gonna say this and, and perceive it as like quote unquote bad, right? But we have a lot of kids that are starting like pitching lessons at an early age, and I think the disconnect that could happen, and it's not the kid's fault, um, it's not even the instructor's fault, but it's just a, a human habit of, of when we get lessons and we, we're teaching something that potentially can fall into the, the category of very like robotic, we, get, we start getting that. We start getting robotic. We start getting put in this bubble and we start thinking about how, okay, well, I have to get to point A and then once I get there, I have to go to B, C, D, E, F, and all of these other these components of the delivery when in reality, like my, and I talk about this all the time, my overall belief and consensus on optimal pitching delivery is being as athletic as humanly possible because I think throwing a baseball and being consistent when you're throwing a baseball, you have to be athletic. It's the most athletic thing you, you do. I mean, think about it. Like that's taking a five ounce little white ball and you're freaking putting it exactly where you want it, a high power output, that's incredibly athletic. And I think we're doing a disservice and I know I've been there in my journey as well. You know, I haven't been shy about talking about that either. Is I, I've gotten to points in my career where I've fallen into that, that I've fallen victim of that too, where I get so like robotical because I do want to be good and I do want to have success. And, and there's so many external influences that are saying, hey, you're just missing this component in your thing and your arm's doing this when in reality you should be doing this. And, and then it's so easy to get caught up and trapped in those thoughts of the mechanic side of it because, you know, technically it could be deemed as a mechanical component, right? Um, so once I got in, to a point in my career where, uh, you know, I was just lost, I had just gotten released, um, you know, I was trying to find myself again. Talked about this many times, you know, with implementation of different tools. Um, the, the Indian clubs, the bell clubs, something that I, I really enjoyed, I really responded well to. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be as simple as possible and I'm gonna just use common sense. And I could be totally wrong, um, or I could be totally right and I strike gold and I become a zillionaire. That's probably not gonna happen. But with bell clubs, right, when we talk about being athletic and we talk about trying to avoid all of this like mechanical stuff when it comes to the way our, our arms, our limbs sync up, 
these things, man, the, the different types of things that you have to do when using an Indian club or a bell club like this is you have to rely on just the natural athletic movement of your limbs. You know, and there's different, there's different exercises to them. There's different things you can do. I'll post a video of, uh, of some, some of my favorites um, as far as like what type of movements I enjoy. I will also include in the blog post that could be found at therobbyroshow.com forward slash clubs. That's Robbie with a Y. I think a lot of people misspell it and then don't know where to find my stuff. But robbyroshow.com forward slash clubs. Um, I'll link some articles from individuals probably a lot smarter than me within the industry and maybe give you some, some more feedback, you know, some different opinions on these. Um, but like I said, when, when we get into the habit of being very robotic and mechanical with the way we throw a baseball, um, we can be doing a disservice to our natural athleticism that wants to, you know, that, that needs to come out of us. And that, that's why I'm such a proponent on long toss and pull downs, running guns, even, you know, implementation of some weighted ball stuff just to get out of that, that, that habit of being mechanical. Um, so back to the bell clubs, like I said, there's, there's certain movements that you, you have to do with these things um, that, that promote the natural athleticism of the way your arm moves, if that makes any sense. I've given these um, to a few of my clients and you know, it's, it's crazy to think, or it's crazy to see um, you know, someone trying to do this you know, the, the appropriate way and they even when doing this they get like robotical, you know, and have to do like these types of of movements and, and whatnot. And I'm not trying to sit here and say like these are easy because trust me, when I first got these and I was trying to learn them, like I didn't look like this, I'll tell you that much. But what it does is it starts promoting that natural freedom of the way your arm is like supposed to move. Because if you notice when I'm when I'm even doing this, is like there's no point in which I'm contracting in the sense of like I'm not getting here and then having to pull it over here and I'm not having to whip it and then stop and then pull it over here. Like no, it's one natural movement, you know, like an external flow and then going internal, it's the same thing. There's no stop. It's just a natural flow. And I think for me at least it promoted that that natural athleticism. I know I've probably repeated myself four times, but it really did that for me. Um, and then uh, in the sense of arm health, obviously I, I don't think I need to sit here and talk about why that would be beneficial. I use these for a, for a pre-throwing, you know, like a warm-up. I'm actually releasing a, a warm-up ebook of like all the things I do before I touch a baseball pretty soon. Stay tuned for that. And then, um, yeah, so arm health, I think it benefits that, benefits recovery. And, uh, but my biggest, my biggest thing, man, is, is just the ability to get out of that that restriction of thinking so much about like where you have to be, man. And I just see so many of my, my guys do like a video analysis with me and it just, it pains me to see that we're getting into this pattern of thinking so much about what, you know, what positions we have to check off the box. And then once we check it, we have to go to another box. And that's why, I mean, I'm kind of strictly just talking about the way our arms move through time and space when throwing a baseball. But uh, I think these, if you are interested, I'll definitely, again, you have the link now. I'll include uh, you know, a potential discount if you, if you guys want to explore the option of doing these. Like I said, man, I'm not sitting here saying, hey, use these, gain 20 miles an hour on your fastball and never get hurt again. I'm not saying that, okay? What I'm saying is, hey, these really work for me. Um, I, I, I understand the concept. It makes sense to me. This is why I would encourage other people to use them and do you get them, you use them, and you don't see any benefit, then whatever, like you tried. But it comes down to the foundation of like putting yourself in the best possible situation to have success. And how can you do, how can you do that if like you're not, you know, maybe trying new things or, you know, not exploring other options of, of how to be successful or, or, you know, for me, it's about like the utilization of, I have a ton of tools over here, I know you can't see, but a ton of tools over here that all promote other, you know, different things that I need in, in my development still. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, like I said, therobbyroshow.com forward slash clubs. 
make sure uh, to check that out. If you're already on the page, scroll below. Like I said, you'll see some uh, other, I'll include some links from other articles in which other people wrote about these. And I'll try to do some more digging and see if I can find any, any other information on them, you know, coming from maybe a research background or whatever. But uh, I hope that helps, man. I just wanted to do my due diligence and talk about them. I've been wanting to do them for a while. Um, kind of been going back and forth on if I should or not. But yeah, I'll, I'll also include another video on this page in regards to like this, my favorite, my personal favorites, um, as far as the movements, exercises, there's a whole list of them. Obviously you can probably YouTube and there's a bunch that comes up. Um, but that's why I think it's a missing tool. It's not mainstream. No one really talks about them. Uh, you know, within the industry, it's about like weighted balls, J bands, you know, I'm the connection ball. I'm trying to get more mainstream as well. But I'm not saying like the, the other things are bad. I'm just saying like that's, that's also the bell clubs for me, something that should be thought about when talking about arm development. Hope that makes sense. I did just ramble a lot, but I hope you, uh, I hope you got something from that. I really do. I hope you get something from all my stuff. It would suck if you didn't. Because then what am I doing? All right, guys. Much love. As always, um, appreciate you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you have any questions, I'll include my email on my website. Be sure to email me if you have any questions. Uh, like I said, emails always work best. If you do Instagram DM me, it's going to take me a, probably a while to get to those. But uh, if you're patient, then you can DM me. I don't care. Uh, that's all I got for you guys. All right. Enjoy. Much love. Talk to you guys later. See you.